So in this video, we're going to start looking at the idea of light pollution. And I guess the first most important thing we need to understand is what light pollution is. So light pollution, which we also sometimes call sky glow, is the brightening or whitening of the night sky by artificial light sources. So take this picture here that we have of the constellation Orion. So if we have a look at the picture of Orion here on the left, what we see is that we can easily see all of the main stars that make up Orion. So you can clearly see the three stars in the middle that make up Orion's belt. We've got the bright red star Betelgeuse up in the top corner there. And we can also see thousands and, and maybe even millions of background stars within this, within this picture. But then if we look at the identical picture of Orion here on the right, where we're in, now in an area that's heavily light polluted, we can still sort of make out the main stars that make up Orion. So you can see the faint three belts there. We can still see Betelgeuse because Betelgeuse is just so big and bright and <laughs> it's really hard to block Betelgeuse out. But we now sort of start to see that we can't see many um, of the background stars as well. So we're really starting to lose out on some of the light as it's being impeded by that artificial light in this image. So there are four main types of light pollution. The first being glare, which I'm sure we're all very familiar with. Glare is when light is coming either directly from the source or maybe it's being reflected off a surface like a glass or a window and it's entering the eyes of someone or an animal that it wasn't supposed to or intended for. The second type of light pollution is sky glow. Now sky glow can be seen in this image and it's basically this big light dome that covers uh, an area that's inhabited by humans. Um, and you see this, uh, basically all this light that's on the land and how that's actually affecting the sky here. Thirdly, there is something that we call light trespass and kind of similar to the other ones in that it's light that falls somewhere where it wasn't intended to fall. Uh, and a good example of this is say light coming from gas flares, uh, say from a mining site. Now the fourth type of light pollution is clutter. That is bright or excessive lighting that really doesn't need to be there. Now, good examples of this is say, um, like a football stadium, um, a lot of commercial areas also use a lot of extra light that just isn't needed. Now, currently, much of the outdoor lighting that we use is uh, artificial lighting. And uh, it's often too bright. Uh, for what it's actually intended to be used for. And so we get a combination of all of these effects um, when we talk about light pollution. Now, in properly directed light um, that doesn't contain shielding or doesn't contain any um, tools in order to direct that light um, is an instance of light pollution or misdirected light. So what effect does light pollution actually have? So as we saw in the first image of Orion there, the most obvious, I guess, effect from light pollution is on astronomy uh, and the way in which we can actually view the sky and the stars. And let's take the Milky Way as, as an example, because we've heard of the importance of the Milky Way um, in terms of Gawarge, again, the celestial emu, and how important that is to the Gamilaroi people in understanding what's happening here on the earth, what's happening with the Dinawan, the emu and its breeding habits, as well as resource management of our water and food, ceremonial markers, seasonal markers, all of these things that are really vital to, to our culture are embedded within this story. But the features of the celestial emu are actually embedded in those dark spaces between the stars of the Milky Way. So those gas clouds that actually block out the light and so these are actually some of the first features that are lost due to light pollution. And if we actually look at the current levels of light pollution within the cities and towns that we live in at the moment, only about 2 to 5% of Australia's population can actually see the celestial emu and the Milky Way from their own backyard. So as we've already discussed, our knowledge systems show connections between the sky and the land, between plants and animals and how they all intersect with 
us and our life here. This is also the case when it comes to light pollution. So the problems extend beyond our ability uh, to view the night sky, to access our knowledges. Light pollution has also uh, de quite devastating effects on the ecosystem, right? Uh, particularly with nocturnal animals uh, for, you know, very obvious reasons. They need that, that darkness in order to be able to conduct normal um, activities to keep these animals alive. Uh, but there's also uh, disruptions being seen in migratory species as well. So for example, newly born sea turtles use the light on the horizon to know how to get to the sea when they're first born. However, of course, we are currently bombarding a lot of area on the land in the opposite direction of the sea. And this is actually leading to millions of baby sea turtles dying each year. Now, much like many of the stories we've heard so far, where we use the nighttime sky to identify seasonal markers, um, many migratory species and birds will do this as well. And this, of course, helps them to get to their destination, to um, you know, conduct their mating season or whatever it may be. And light pollution can actually cause these birds uh, to migrate too early or too late, potentially missing, um, you know, missing their mating season or missing um, the seasonal foods that they need to access. So what can be done to reduce light pollution?